If it's not the kids, it's the dog interrupting me. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Shall we begin? Hi guys. So today it's a little bit different setup. I'm up here in my room hiding because all my kids are home for Thanksgiving break and they are loud and they are into everything. So I figured I would come upstairs and get a few minutes of peace and quiet. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. It is going to be a story time video. And I am going to talk to you guys about the car wreck that my mom and I were in when I was a lot younger. And my reasoning for bringing it up now, if it seems totally random to be talking about this car accident, was on the 21st. 21st of November was the 25th anniversary of when this happened. And the other importance of kind of this year is I was six years old when it happened. I was in first grade. Nolan is now in first grade. My mom was close to my age. I think she was around 35 when it happened and I am 31. It's this whole new reality to me now that I'm an adult and I have children and looking back on it and everything my mom went through and everything that happened because of it, it really gives me a whole new respect for her. At the time of this accident, we were living in a really, really small town in Illinois. I was actually born in Southern Illinois. So we were living in a town up there that was a farming community. It was surrounded by farms, I mean, cornfields, everything. I mean, the, the most exciting thing this town had was we had a Dairy Queen, we had a grocery store, a few gas stations, and then eventually we ended up getting a McDonald's. And you know it's a small town when the high school band comes out and plays at the grand opening of McDonald's. It was that kind of small town. So if we wanted to go actually do anything, we would have to drive to one of the neighboring towns. And there was a town about 30 minutes away. My dad grew up there and my grandparents at the time were still alive and that's where they were living. Compared to where I am now, it's still a small town. But for us then, it was bigger. It had a mall, it had a lot of restaurants. If any concerts or anything came to town or to the area, that's where they would come. My parents had bought tickets for our family to go see the Nutcracker, and it was in this neighboring town. And on the night of it, my brother got sick. So instead of just scrapping the tickets and wasting it, my mom and I decided to go. My dad was gonna stay home with him. I don't remember much about actually seeing the Nutcracker. I kind of remember going and not sitting still and talking to people around me, you know, typical six-year-old behavior. And I don't remember much after. I know we went to the grocery store because we needed to get some things for the house. And so I fell asleep on the way home. And we had one of those old school like vans, just like those, I don't remember the brand of van. I, these kind of things I probably should have asked. We had just one of those old school vans and this was still at the time where kids could sit in the front seat of cars. So I was sitting in the front seat. The moment before I woke up, I don't know if any of you have seen Roger Rabbit, but in Roger Rabbit there's this scene where at the near the end he goes back to Toontown and I think he was driving the car and crashes it into something. It's like a fire hydrant or a pole, a light pole. He crashed into something and the car was kind of like hit it. So before I opened my eyes, this was literally the image that I saw. I remember seeing this image in my head, just this car accident, this cartoony car accident. I open my eyes and I come to and I look forward because I'm, I'm sitting there and it, we, we were, these are all back roads. I mean, you're driving through farms, country. These aren't well lit roadways. Everything is dark in these areas. You're, you can't see much. I mean, except for what your headlights are showing you. you you're not gonna be able to really see the roads that well. So it's very dark. And I remember looking and the entire windshield was just like shattered. And as I looked on my mom's side, it was like actually, coming in the car. Now, I mean, for the most part, the windshield was still intact. It was just like completely shattered, completely just completely shattered. But I remember looking at the windshield and seeing it. And again, I'm six years old and I, 
to this day, like my brain did not register what was going on. My brain couldn't register what was happening in that moment. And I look over at my mom who's in the front seat and she is just like, she had like this big chunky like sweater coat thing on. And I can't see again, cause it's very dark. I can't really see much. She's just kind of this big shadow, but she's not moving. She's not saying anything. I think she may have been moaning a little bit, but she really wasn't, she wasn't saying anything. She was very still, very still. And it was very quiet so quiet. I think I kept saying like mom, mom, like mom, just like a six-year-old, like mom, mom, are you okay? Mom, mom. And I don't know how loud I was talking. I don't know if I was screaming in this moment. I was just so confused. I just had this, it wasn't even like, I wasn't scared in that moment because I was just so confused. Like I just did not know what was happening. And I don't know how long this went on where it was just me and my mom sitting in the car. But before I know it, out my passenger side window, like out the front, these two people like came up to the car and they start talking to me because they're like, hey, are you okay? Who else is in the car with you? Are you okay? And I know the first thing I asked them was, am I dreaming? Is this a dream? Am I still asleep? Because again, as a kid, I could not register what, what was happening and I had just been asleep, so I didn't know if this was real, what was going on. And I don't really remember their response. The next thing was they were trying to get me out of the car. So they're like, are you okay? Can you move? Can you get out of the, can you get out? Because my door, they tried to open it, was jammed shut. Like you were not getting that door open. It was not going to open. So they're like, can you move? Can you, can you get out of the car? So I was like, um, yeah, I think. So they were able to slide open the passenger side side door. So they slid open the door and I crawled out through the back and when I was crawling through the back there was like I remember milk being all over the car because again I told you we had gone grocery shopping there was milk everywhere the milk had exploded and there were like cans and I just remember our food being all over the back of the car I crawled out and they did not let whoever these people were did not let me see the car. They didn't let me see anything. They kind of shielded me from it. They carried me to their car. And back then too, those were the cars. Does anybody remember the cars where it had the middle seat in the front seat? You know, the seats went all the way across and you could actually sit in the middle seat in the front seat in a car. So they put me in the front seat of this car and it also had one of those like burgundy velvet interiors. And I passed the time, occupied my time by feeling the velvet on the car. I still, again, didn't know what was going on. I still felt this overwhelming sense of confusion. And they're like, your dad's on the way, your brother's on the way. And I just, I didn't know what was going on. I really didn't. I didn't feel sad. I wasn't scared. I was just confused. So I just remember sitting there touching the velvet on this car. The ambulance pulls up and I remember them coming to talk to me, like checking me, making sure I'm okay. And then they're like, okay, sit right here. We'll be back. It felt like forever. I don't know how long I was sitting in this car, but it felt like forever. And they eventually got me out and loaded me up. They put me on, I didn't get on like one of like the padded gurneys. I got put on like the board. You know how they have those like solid board, whatever. I got put on one of those. And in the ambulance, they had me like on to the side and someone sitting there with me and they were just like, don't look anywhere. Don't move your neck. Don't look either way. And of course it's, <laughs> I'm six and you say, don't look this way. Don't, whatever you do, don't do it. So what did I do? I looked and in the van with, or in the ambulance with me, they were putting the lady from the other car that actually caused the whole car accident. Um, I just remember her face just being covered in blood. Like there was just blood everywhere. And they took the little oxygen mask thing and had it on her, but there was just blood, which I don't even think she was like badly hurt. Not anything like my mom. She wasn't badly hurt. I think she just messed up her face. But once I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna look anymore. I'm not gonna look. I was taken, me and this other lady were taken to the hospital that is actually in the town we used to live, the small little hospital. Mom was taken back to the town we were in to their hospital, but due to her injuries, they ended up having to fly her out to St. Louis because that was the closest like large city that had like a large city hospital. Like she had to go somewhere with 
a lot more care. I was sitting laying on the hospital bed, you know, all the medics and everything are all around me once we get to the hospital and they're like, we have to cut her out of her outfit because we need to see. And again, I don't know if any of you remember, if you were a girl in the 90s, you probably had these outfits, the little jumpsuit outfits, like they were all one piece and they buttoned up and you had like your lacy collars and you know, you wore your Mary Janes with your ruffle socks and the little lace headbands. That was what I was wearing. It was one of those jumpers. And I remember it being my favorite outfit. So I was, that's the moment I got upset. I got so upset because they were gonna cut this outfit off me. So I was like, no, 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 you can unbutton it. You can unbutton it, just take it off. They ended up doing that. They ended up just taking off my outfit and not ruining it. <laughs> During all this, at some point, my dad and my brother got there because I remember seeing their faces over me, just kind of looking over me, checking because they didn't know what was going on. They did not know my condition, my mom's condition. They didn't know if we were okay, if we were gonna die. Like they did not know. So I know it was a relief to my dad to see, see his child, his little girl, his six year old daughter laying there. And my first instinct, I look at him and smile and say, hey dad. And now as a parent, thinking back to that, just that, ugh, I just, mm, I can't even imagine what my dad went through. Because at that moment too, he didn't know if my mom was going to live. Like he didn't know. And she was further away. Like he was not with her. Like he, he was there because it was in the same town. From there, it's really just patchy memories that I kind of remember. It's, I remember them telling me my mom had to get taken out of the car with jaws of life. And I remember picturing like this giant shark like cutting open the car, which I guess makes sense. Like it kind of is jaws of life. My mom got medevaced or whatever they call it, sent to St. Louis. She had tons of injuries. Um, she ended up having a, let me see if I can remember all. She had a crushed pelvis. She had, and then she was in a hospital bed actually in our own house for two months afterwards and she had to have her hip replaced a few years ago due to the complications of this she broke her wrist she had to get a plate put into her eye which she actually still has she broke the bone in one of her upper legs and they had to put this huge steel rod in there she also i think broke an ankle and then she had to have a lot of therapy afterwards and she had to basically relearn to walk and i remember her nervous system got all out of whack and i remember my dad like doing therapy at home and like pulling on her leg and it would cause her to like convulse after everything healed she ended up having one leg that was longer than the other and she had to put these little like cushiony lifts in her shoe to make it even but years and years i mean this happened when she's 35 so years and years of that by the time she hit like her 50s she was having so many issues walking and that's why she had the hip replaced which it's been a world of difference since all this happened that one moment that happened when she was 35 completely changed the course of her life like she is still feeling the effects of that car accident that happened back when she was close to my age. And that boggles my mind when I think like almost my entire life she has dealt with it. It's just been part of life. But that one event changed everything. Like our lives were affected from the moment that happened on. My injuries were, I just ended up with like a black eye and I had some severe bruising from the seatbelt and nothing else really. I think I had some cuts and scratches just from the windshield glass fragments, but I was lucky. And they said that a lot of it probably had to do with the fact that I was asleep because I didn't tense up and I didn't brace for impact because I was asleep. They think that, that could have easily saved me from getting more injuries or dying or who knows what could have happened if I had not been asleep. So that actually was a blessing that I had fallen asleep in the car. It really makes you thankful and it, it puts in perspective of how short life can be and how everything can change just in an instant. And how the wreck happened was a deer had come out into the road and the lady coming the other direction swerved to miss the deer and ended up hitting us head on on my mom's side of the car. And I know there was, they, I think my parents had to go to court after this or the insurances went to court. I ended up having to go talk to lawyers after this happened. I remember being a little six year old sitting in a room with all these adults and a recorder and them asking me questions about it, which was terrifying as a kid. You don't know what's going on. It just makes me thankful that for whatever reason on that night we survived. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are not as fortunate as us, but my family survived and we've dealt with it ever since. And to this day, I hate driving at night. Like I hate driving. I, 
At 16, I was not one of those kids rushing to get my driver's license. Like, I took my time. I was fine with not driving because I just, I still get nervous being in cars. And especially now that I have kids, I do get nervous driving. I'm better during the day, but at nighttime, I hate driving at night. If I don't have to drive at night, I refuse to drive at night. I don't even like riding in the car at night. And I really think it all has to do with that just because I know what can happen. And the older I get, and now that I look back on it all, especially from a different perspective, not the six year old brain, the 31 year old mom brain that I have now. And I think of what my mom went through and my family went through. And if something like that was to happen to us, if I was to go through something like that now with one of my kids, just how I can't even imagine. My mom is one of the strongest women I know. She has had to endure so much and she has overcome it with little complaints. And she has been in like chronic pain ever since this. And it messed up everything from like nervous system, hormones. I mean, everything it could mess up, it messed up. It changed her life completely. She has had to deal with this from the time that happened. She's still dealing with it to this day. She doesn't complain about it. She just goes on with her day and does what she has to do and does the best she can. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful week. To all my fellow American viewers, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great time if you are traveling. Please, 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 please be safe. Be smart. When you are out there on the roads, use caution. We will have some better and more chipper videos coming up soon. We are getting our Christmas tree tonight. Not really decorating it, but we are going to go ahead and get it because we're going to be busy when we normally pick up our tree. So I wish you guys all the best. If you haven't already subscribed and you want to, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to go now because I think I've been up here long enough. I need to stop ignoring my children and my dog. We will talk to you guys soon. Bye guys.